Anyway, let's get into it, shall we? <clears throat> Roosters defeat the Broncos 20 to 10. Tries Manu, Panga, uh, Radley, uh, Broncos, Mariner Walsh, Sam Walker, four from four, Reynolds, one from two. Mm-hmm. Smithy. Yes. What do you reckon, mate? Two heavyweights. Yeah. Um, slightly different game to the first match, which we'll get into next, mainly um, Rabbits. But uh, yeah, look, again, I, I was. I was really um, excited to see these two go to head to head, and actually, I was interested to hear the comments post game from um, a couple of the Roosters people. So Trent Robinson, the coach, and um, a couple of the players spoke about how they look back at last year and thought, "Well, we need to change the way we do things, right?" So let's let's not build into our season. They were embarrassed by their first up performance when they got beaten by the Dolphins. If you remember back all the way to last year, round one at Suncorp, um, they wanted to get on the front foot early. And I thought they just they, – they played a great game of footy. Great game of footy. I thought Brisbane – look, they they sh- they had glimpses of class, right, of, of the way they played last year. And let's not get too carried away, Kempi. It's round one. Yeah. It's round one, right? I still have them as my favourites to win the premiership this year. I know you would too. Um, but, you know, they just – they looked a little bit unorganised at times for mine. Um, and a little bit clunky, and you know the roosters. The roosters look strong. Um, I was really impressed with the way Sammy Walker played. Luke Keary, they just did them around the park um, beautifully. Um, they played nice and strong through the middle. Victor Radley had another strong game, um, and you know Tedesco. So James Tedesco, you know, he copped a fair bit of criticism last year for you know some of his performance, and you know, and and I think fair enough. Um, at times last year, you know, he was he was a bit below his best, but it looks as though that he's put in a lot of work, a lot of work. And I think he he commented, um, mate, about how this is the the off season or the sorry the preseason that has just gone by. That's the longest preparation he's had in a while, and and you can tell by the way he's just hit the ground running in round one. Mm. Oh, mate, uh, the Roosters. I think that they've kind of. They've just had to have a real honest conversation with themselves of mm. this late run stuff. Yeah. Look, it's all well and good when you've got a guy like Cooper Cronk who can, you know, bring the boys in in around, yep. you know, 10, 12, 13 and go, boys, yep. we need to start now. Mm. Whereas when you lose a leader like that, very hard to wrangle the boys in early enough yep. at the end of a season to, to get going. Yep. Um, and I think that the Roosters – look – what I really like about the Roosters situation is Robbo has been really honest with himself as well. Very mm. easy for that bloke to be like, hey, mate, I've won three premierships, yeah. four or five minor premierships. Yeah. I know what I'm doing. Where yep. he's come out and said, mate, we're approaching this season completely different. It's the best the Roosters have looked, in my opinion, in regards to mm-hmm. clunkiness, as in non-clunkiness. Um, mm-hmm. It's the best Sam Walker and Kiri have looked together. Yep. Radley looks way more settled and much more sure of his role. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I really like the approach of, Start fast, bank the points up. Yep. We can ease off the breaks in the middle of the season, and then we go on that run. Yep. I really like that. Uh, do you think? Do you think they may suffer of? They haven't had a full season of you know high quality footy in a while mm. that they could lose a bit of steam, or do you think that they've got that all planned out? No, I think they've. I think they've accounted for that. I think they've planned it. I actually think they're up for this year, mate. I really do, and. Particularly when I, I've listened to um, Victor Radley talk post game, and he mentioned something along the lines of what you spoke about, was that it seems as though they've sat down in the start of you know the preseason just gone and had a really honest conversation with each other, saying, "Well, hey, look, you know, the Roosters have got this reputation, right, of being you know one of the the bigger clubs in the NRL, one of the best teams, and always have you know seem to be able to put together a great roster." But their results haven't reflected that, right, yeah. over the last couple of years. And they've sort of been living off that, that 2018, 2019 sort of results that they, where they went back-to-back back with the premierships. But Victor Radley, and it was great to hear him talk the other night, like we actually, when, when I say we, it's the Roosters, this is him talking, they actually sat down, had a conversation about, look, we aren't the Roosters of 2018, 2019. Yep. We are nowhere near that. Yeah. And we are nowhere near the best team in the competition. Like, mm. we're not even close. Yeah. So the only way we turn that around is is through our work, through our performances. And I think they had a, a, you know, a huge step in the right direction um, in game one. Well, it, it's a great point, um, you know, from yourself and obviously Radley as well. In reality, you take away the Roosters' badge, you take away whatever, they're a fringe eight side. Like, 
In well, that's what the they la- have been, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But, like in reality, the last five years, essentially, I know there were some years I think they finished fifth or whatever, mm. but right now heading into this season, they are a fringe eight side. Yep. Um, now, obviously you look at their side on paper and you go, of course, they're not actually that, mm. but results speak. Uh, yep. In regards to the Broncos. Yes. Um, Look, guys, I think that people, if you actually watched the Broncos last year, they were, they're not Penrith Panthers. They are not clinical. Mm. They, as in, like clinical is the wrong word, but they are not r- like a systematic robotic no, come in, right. give a very obvious game plan. They had scrappy win after scrappy win after scrappy win last season against some top tier sides, against some bottom tier sides. Mm-hmm. I personally think it's going to take you know, round 12, 13, 14, mm-hmm. just like it did last year. Remember everyone was saying, I'm mm-hmm. unsure whether they're a premiership threat. We got to the midway through the year and we said, okay, I think they are. Yep. I personally think it's going to take a while for them to kick into gear because of the losses of Cape Well, Palacia, yep. Legla Herbie. Yep. What do you reckon, mate? Yeah, possibly. I think, um, you know, I think I think they're ready to go. I just I just don't think they got it right the other night. Mm. I really don't. For whatever reason, um, you know, but I'll, I will stay by my th- initial thoughts when I'm watching I'm thinking well this is a footy side look they look fit and ready mm. but they just looked unorganized at times and, and maybe trying to rely on individuals rather than yeah. trying to put in you know a good team performance mm. um so I, look you know I'm not too concerned by that first up result I think that that's an easy fix I think they sit down review that game have a look at those areas where they were a bit clunky and a little bit unorganized because it but you cannot it doesn't matter who you play if you play that style of football where sort of you're not all on the same page, it's going to be very hard to win footy games. It doesn't matter who you play, whether you're playing, you know, the team running first or the team running last, it's hard to get across the line when you're unorganized and relying on individuals. Well, that's, you know, that's, you just cannot do that at the elite level. Um, You know, the the thing, the thing about the Bronx is uh, the question I have is like, and it might, I might throw this to you. How big of an impact do you reckon particularly those two guys of Flegler and, and Herbie will have on them this year. Do you reckon that, that will take them a little bit to adjust to, or do you think, nah, they're, they're ready to go? Uh, definitely, I think that's going to take them a, a bit to adjust to. You even look to last year, Flegler and Herbie, in round one, they weren't the same players they were by round 16. No. They came on to being some of the best in their position. And I think that it was almost the perfect storm uh, last night. So last year, sorry, not last night, in Vegas. Mm. So last year, they had Pierre Cora coming off the bench and they had Capewell, Ricky. Yes. So what happened in the game against the Roosters, what happens? Pierre Cora gets injured. We have no edge back row on the bench. Mm. We have to put Carrigan out there, but we don't have Flegler or Palacia to carry the weight of Carrigan heading on the edges. Yep. And that's where I think they looked a lot, are very disorganized because Carrigan's actually usually the one that dictates their ruck in the middle, positioning, yep. the tip-ons, the where we're going to get to. Yes. Uh, and so I think going forward, Kevy is probably going to have to bite the bullet with one of the big boppers on the bench mm. and bring on an, a specialist back rower just because we don't have the same uh, guys like Flegler and Palacia to really pick up Paddy, Paddy Carrigan's weight yep. uh, through the middle if you move Paddy Carrigan to the edge there. What were your thoughts on um, Marty Tapaua getting the nod in front of Xavier Look, Willison? I think Kevy's looked at it and said it's a long season. This is a super high-pressure game. Yep. Let's get the experienced guy. And also, uh, Roosters, notoriously a hyper-aggressive forward pack. Yep. Let's get an experienced veteran on there that's a bit thicker and sturdier. Mm. We've got plenty of... T- the last thing we want is Xavier Willison to go out there and get absolutely jammed and lose <laughs> confidence, you know, yeah, first you know later in the year. Mm. And so I think he's gone, look, if this was, if they were heading into finals right now, I think he picks Willison. Mm-hmm. But because it's round one, I think that he's just going to ease him into it. Yep. Because if we are to go on a premiership push... Willison's probably the guy, one of the rookies that's going to need to stand up along with Mariner. Yep. Big talking um, point out of this one, though, Kempi. Oh, uh, yeah, big talking point. Obviously, there's been an allegation of uh, a racist slur. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, me personally, uh, I will wait until the investigation is done yep. uh, to give my opinion on what has happened. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, uh, my opinion, obviously, you know, I think it's everyone's opinion, yep. there is absolutely no room for racism. doesn't matter where, when, who said it. There's mm. no room for racism in rugby league. What do you reckon, mate? Yeah, oh, mate, I'm, I'm of the exact same opinion. It's... it's um... Look, there's – I don't know when it's scheduled for the, the hearing. Um, he's obviously been referred straight to the judiciary, um, Spencer Lenu. Um, you know, it's just it, – it's not a great look, mate. It's, it's, it's pretty ordinary. And if he said it, it's ordinary. Like, 
anyone that's played any any level of sport, right? There's banter, there's sledging, but there is a line. There's a line where you just go, you know that's wrong. You know what's right and you know what's wrong. There's things in the wrong column that you do not say and there's things in the right column that you go, well, yeah, you can you can get away with that. You know, you're trying to stir people up. You try and get under their skin. You try and take their mind off the job. If he said what is alleged has been said, he he is in a lot of strife. He is in a lot of strife. So you know that's I'm, I'm with you where um, there's there's a process that needs to be um, stepped through, and that'll that'll happen with the judiciary. Not sure when that's happening. It'll, it'll obviously have to happen fairly soon. I'd like to think Tuesday. It's uh, it's going to be happening Tuesday. Um, uh, Alex has just said so. That's going to be coming up um, in the next you know sort of week, but um, it's it's. Look, if, if they have the audio and it's clear of what he said or what he's alleged to have said, he's going to be spending some time on the sideline. There's no debate, doubt about that. Yeah, absolutely. Now we're going to head to a break. After the break, we've got Manly against the Rabbitohs review. Welcome back to the Captain's Run with Cameron Smith uh, and myself. We are here for Chemist Warehouse. Protect yourself and those around you from the flu this winter. Book your flu shot today at Chemist Warehouse. Manly defeats the Rabbitohs 36 mm. to 24. And the great Luke Brooks's redemption arc, it begins. It begins in the biggest way possible. I thought he was outstanding. Smithy, yes. speak to me. What'd you think of the game, mate? Oh, great game. Great game, mate. It's uh, it was a it was a fantastic way to kick off uh the Vegas doubleheader. Um Triathon, which was I, I think what the NRL was hoping for, I guess, in in the yeah. first up match, which you know, brings entertainment. Um, really impressed with the way both teams started. The, they were physical. They were physical. A couple of massive shots. So a big hit on uh, Kepi, the former yeah. Eagle, the former yeah. teammates. They they line him up. I think it was Josh Alloy and um, was it Jakey? Was it Jakey Drabovic got involved in that tackle maybe? Um, but anyway, it was big hits, line breaks. Um, yeah, some fantastic footy. But Manly, super impressed with Manly. Mm. Super impressed with Manly, how they sort of hung in there, fought their way back into the game, and then sort of not just got in front, they they actually kicked a mm. um, couple of fan, you know, some of the superstars on show as well. Tommy Trebojevic, really happy to see him get through 80 minutes. And he looked like he was moving freely. Yep. Um, not great signs for us Queenslanders. Later in the year, <laughs> Kempe, I'm, just, I'm sitting there just going, oh, mate, love seeing you back, Tommy, but geez. And then Latrell Mitchell killing it too. And then Trell Uh-oh. as well, you know, like, oh, mate, he had some great touches um, and he looks he looks fitter than what he has in the last couple of years. Um, but he was involved in a couple of moments which gave momentum back to Manly. Mm. And the, the concerning thing for me with the Rabbits, mate, is that that's what cost them their season last year. Mm. Like, they, like, remember back round 11, they are leading the competition. And then I think... What, did they lose six in a row? Something like that. It was, yeah. it was something. And then they, Huge they, fallout. Yeah, their, their season just went into a spiral. And they ended up missing out on, on playing finals when they were leading the comp halfway, halfway through it. So those, and those, type of, those, those small little things that cost them the victory the other night. Well, I won't say cost them the victory. It, it took them out of the match or, or sort of took the opportunity away from winning the game. Or, or handed momentum back to Manly, I should say. That's that's what happened in the back half of last year. Mm. So they need to, uh, again, like I spoke about, you know, with the, with the Broncos. Let's not get too carried away, right? It's round one, but we seen this last year from the Rabbitohs, where they'd start well, they get in, themselves in a position where they're in front, they they've got full control of the game, and you, and you're looking at them going, well, look, this is, they're going to go on and win this one, but they find ways. To hand momentum and and opportunities back to the back to the other team. Mm, I like that's uh, my reading of it was basically key. So they were building pressure, building pressure, and you're like, this is a top tier side. Mm. Building pressure, you can see the seals are hanging on by a thread. Yep. The only uh, I guess saving grace or silver lining mm-hmm. is outside of the errors from Chell towards the end of the game. I know he's through that intercept, but mm-hmm. outside of the ones at the end of the game. Yep. It was uh, an error from two errors from Richie Kenner. Yeah, that was an defensive issue. errors. And so usually full strength that would be Jackie White and Campbell Graham. Yep. Uh, and then there was an error from Mawali, who was also relatively young. So 
if you're looking for a glass half full kind of, okay, they're, you know, they're younger, they're the rookies. Yep. I think that's a good thing. Yep. Uh, I will say positives. Mm -hmm. I thought Cookie played the best game he's played in a very long time. Yeah. I thought he was outstanding. Yeah, he has. And mate, I I was watching him too and thinking, mate, this is, this is great. Like he's, he's playing some, some great footy. Some of, you know, he was active early. He was running the ball, very direct. The, 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 the challenge for Damien Cook, right? So he's getting a little bit older now, Kempi. Mm. The challenge for Cookie is that like when you're playing in that position, when you're playing dummy half, you know, he's not a he's not a huge body in, you know, today's game. Um, you know, he's standing in front of guys that are that are weighing in the, in excess of, you know, 112, 115 kilos. He's putting his body in front of them, tackling them. Like he's making what, 30, 40 tackles a game? Yeah. It the as the season goes on, it your body gets sore, mate. You know what I mean? Your body gets sore. And we've probably seen that from Cookie over the last couple of years where he's fantastic in the first eight to 10 rounds and slowly but surely, you know, the number of runs decline, um, which, you know, when he's running the ball, Sousa, very, very good. Mm. Very, very good because it gets Latrell on the front foot. It gets Cody on the front foot. Lachlan Lachlan Ilias plays off momentum. So it's hard, mate. It's a challenge. It's a challenge for him to keep up that, that intensity, that style of footy where, you know, he's having 15 runs a game and making 40 tackles. It's a big ask to do that every week of, of this competition. So, but completely agree. Really positive start by Cookie. Great to see him playing the way he did in, in round one. And I'll tell you one other bloke that I was really impressed with, Luke Brooks. Mate, how good was he? Well, he's so good. Like, so good. And, and and also, you know, you'd know better than anyone like Combinations take ages. Like we're talking, sometimes they can take two years to really feel like I know exactly where they want the ball. I know exactly where I need to be. Mm. Mate, he looked as smooth as anything with DC. They didn't look like yeah. they hadn't played together before ever. No. And mate, I'll tell you what, he, he, he looked he looked like a relaxed footy player. That's mm. what he looked like. You know yeah. what I mean? Like when he first started playing, like he was just confident, relaxed, just go and play his game. Last couple of years, he, he just looked, he looked like, it almost like he didn't want to be there. It was just like, man, this is, I, I don't want this pressure. It's too hard. And you can understand why, um, given, you know, the results that the West Tigers have had over recent times. But he looked like a, a, a person where he, he didn't have that weight on his shoulders. Like that's DCE's team. Yeah. Okay. So he, he's the one that, that manages their footy side. He directs them around the park. He, he's barking instructions, all that sort of stuff. Brooksy was just, all he had to do was look after his edge. Mm. So he just sat out there, waited for his opportunities. And the thing I loved about his game on the weekend was that he, he mate, he took on he took on the defensive line early. Mm. Got himself into the game, felt good, and then ended up scoring a try. Nearly scored two. You know, he dropped that one over the line when he was reaching out. But it's great to see him back confident, relaxed, playing the footy that we all know he can he can play. I just like to just going back to Cookie, I'd love to get your thoughts on this. So I'm mm. I am becoming more and more, probably the last two years, Mm -hmm. the believer that if you are an explosive kind of dummy half that does like to run the ball Mm -hmm. a lot, Mm -hmm. I actually don't think it's in your best interest to be an 80-minute hooker. Um, Yeah. You know, you even look at the Storm heading into finals last year. Harry Grant was actually put to the bench because it was like, look, why is he on the field in the washing machine getting Mm -hmm. jammed Mm -hmm. when his best asset is his running game? Yeah. I I think the days of an 80-minute hooker, unless you are more of a hooker that is service first, you know, Mm -hmm. Just getting the boys around the park. Yep. I kind of feel like the days are a little bit over with the speed of the game. What are your thoughts on it? Yeah, mate, you, you might be onto something there because a lot of teams are doing that. Um, also, you know, the reason why a lot of teams are doing it too is because there's 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 not that many nines that can play 80 in today's mm. game. You know, they don't have that fitness level to be able to make 40 tackles and to be able to carry the footy, you know, 10 or 12 times. Mm. Um, but certainly those blokes with that, explosive speed that express speed like cookie um maybe that's something that they need to look into is just give him a, a little spell either side of half time yeah. just to keep keep his energy levels high and because like that's that's his biggest weapon right mm. his biggest weapon is his speed like i've pl- i've played against the guy many many times mm. and when he when he's playing that explosive game where he's running direct he's coming at your defensive line he's making you make decisions quickly that's when that's when he's at his most dangerous, which in turn makes the Rabbitohs dangerous as well. Mm. So you, it's a good point you make, mate. It's 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 something that you know Dimitri might have to look into in the future. And, and to your point that you spoke about earlier, 
It's such a long season. Like, yeah. yes, yeah. okay, Cookie can do this for 20 rounds. But yep. when you get into the back end of the season and you need him to actually go to another level, yep. it's like his body just can't. On top of that, I also do think there is value in bringing on different um, players to play hooker for 10 to 20 minutes yeah. to vary the tempo of your team's attack so yeah. that it doesn't get into kind of a rhythm where you go, okay, we know what's coming here. Yeah, um, predictable. I, mate, we've got to head to a break.